Hi, I'm Paris of Paris Ashley Home, and today I'm going to teach you how to build this sectional. So let's get started. With the help of the Home Depot, I was able to get all of the supplies that I needed for this build as well as decor. So go ahead and screenshot that product list. I based all of my measurements off of these Hampton Bay cushions. They are 24 inches by 24 inches and that is what we're gonna do. Here are some cuts for you. You can screenshot these as well. They will also be linked below. Uh, in the blog that I will be providing for this build. So here's the slat supports and slats. Previously was the base. This is where the slat support placements will go as well as how I laid out the slats. And last but not least, the back, the back build. So these are, some are facing sideways, some are facing forward based on how I built it. And again, that will be more detailed as we build. So we're gonna start off by cutting our eight diagonal 26 inch four by four pieces and we're just gonna repeat this. So I did mark 26 inches based off the wide cut. I would use my speed square, draw that, and then get the diagonal uh, 45 degree angle from there and then get the proper placement for my saw and go ahead and cut that. And then again, I repeated that eight times. Once we have all eight pieces cut, we are gonna start assembling. I have three inch screws, four inch screws, wood glue, my impact driver, and I am using the star screws these are going to give a lot more uh, torque and it's just a lot easier to screw these in as opposed to a phillips head so we do want to add some wood glue for the extra support wood glue is actually stronger than nails once it dries i didn't have a clamp big enough to hold these together so you know what we used my knees and it worked great uh, so i did um two three inch screws towards the edge and then one four inch screw deeper inside just to make sure we had good support and that these would not come apart all right so we need to build two of these guys and after we build two of them i'm building such a large sectional that i need to find out how high my support needs to, pieces need to be and this is just a spare piece of wood um so a two by eight is actually seven and a quarter inches wide and with that knowledge i'm going to make the gap the height of a two by four which means i'm going to cut three eight and three quarter inch pieces of four by four as my supports which you will see as we keep going or you can go back and reference my drawings one thing I like to do when I am working with large pieces of wood is cut twice the amount that I will need knowing that I need multiple pieces. So I actually cut this piece at 18 inches and now I'm gonna cut this smaller piece of wood down to the two eight and three quarters and then I will cut one more after. And then lastly, we're gonna cut one four by four at 26 inches, the same height as our side pieces. This is gonna be our back corner support that will attach the back pieces together. So once we have all of our four by four pieces cut and our side pieces assembled, we are gonna go ahead out to our space and put them down for placement. And this is where we're gonna see the size that we want. Um, I had already planned on making a five by two sectional. If you want to make a four by three, you'll just go ahead and subtract 24 inches to the long side and add 24 inches to the short side and that will give you a four by three sectional and you can continue to make adjustments that way throughout the process so i'm just going to be measuring between the side squares and the center posts at the uh, support posts and that will be my measurements for um, adding my support pieces to the base and you can also go back and reference this exact uh, build and measurement in my sheets in the uh, beginning of this presentation or in the blog linked below um, I don't know why I called it a presentation this is a YouTube tutorial <laughs> we are not in school but I mean you kind of are if you're learning how to build something anyways this looks comfy to me so let's go uh, let's go get our pieces cut so based on our measurements we need 124 inch 170.25 inch and 446 in one fourth inch two by eight and that will be how we assemble our base so let's grab our speed square and our tape measure and get to cutting. All right, we have all of our pieces cut. We have our corner piece, our three posts, our attachment pieces, and our side posts. Uh, again, the measurements are in that screenshot at the beginning of this tutorial. So before assembly, we are going to use our orbital sander. We're gonna sand with a 120 and then a 220. So let's get to sanding. Um, I am going to completely assemble this base before we do any more cuts. Why? Because sanding, 
staining and sealing a fixture this large when put together is a lot harder than doing it in the first place. And because this is an outdoor sectional, I do want it to be sealed as best as possible. And then I'm gonna be drilling my pocket holes. We will be putting pocket holes in every piece except the four by fours. For the two by eights, I am gonna do four pocket holes on each side. So here's a close up of that pocket hole jig. We are using our one and a half inch bit for the pocket holes and getting those pocket holes together. This is how we're gonna assemble the entire unit. And I will get all the pocket holes in the pieces of wood before I do the 220 sand grit to make sure that um, any splinters that came up when I made the pocket holes see just like that. Uh, so so thank, thanks, thanks Orbital Sander for coming on screen when I was talking about you. Uh, isn't that funny how it works when you're making a tutorial, how things just pop up as you talk about them. So I got those pocket holes on both sides of all of these pieces. They're upside down, sorry. And I have them all sanded. So we are ready for the next phase, which um, I did realize I forgot to cut the piece that attaches to these side pieces so I am spacing this out I decided to get a 22 inch piece so I need two 22 inch pieces of wood we're gonna get those cut real quick and then we will get them sanded and pocket hold as well and here I am squeezing out some wood glue and adding some sand sawdust that's what that's called not sand using a little screwdriver and guess what I just made my own wood filler and do you know why I made my own wood filler because this stuff is gonna be a lot uh, more stainable as opposed to actual wood filler granite actual wood filler you can stain but just not as well I am filling in everywhere that I had screws I will go through and fill in any imperfections in the wood as well and then I realized hey we're gonna have cushions on these little support blocks so I sanded the tops of these and just rounded the edges to make sure that no one scrapes their legs on these while sitting because this is supposed to be a comfy space not a dangerous space Okay, that's enough. No one wants to watch anyone sand longer than they have to. So we have all of our pieces cut and sanded for the base build. Anyways, uh, it's time to stain these guys. So we're going to start off with some pre-stain conditioner. This is good to make sure that when you do stain, it doesn't look splotchy. After you do the pre-stain, you do want to wait roughly 30 minutes to have it soak in. And this is going to give you the best, um, the best even smooth stain when we get to the staining process. Anyways, all my pieces are wood conditioned and we are gonna let them sit for 30 minutes. Now that it has been 30 minutes, we are going to white wash. I am using Antique White by Verathane. Why are we white washing? This is just my preference. This reduces the yellow tannins in the wood to just give a beautiful finish. Um, after we white wash, you will see what stain I use. So now we're on to our early American. This is my absolute favorite stain color. Uh, early American. Again, after you whitewash, you want to wait just a little bit. I do immediately, so here's an actual real tip. When you are staining, I don't like letting it sit on too long. Um, I have a, a stain rag and a wipe rag. I immediately wiped it off. Yay, we're done. All right, so this has the two coats of Early American. I have a lot of pieces going on here. So I did decide to end up doing a chair with this sectional build, which I, again, I have stated before, I will make a tutorial on how to do that as well. But next up, we are doing the spar urethane. Spar urethane is specific for exterior projects, so wood projects. And because I want this to withstand the elements, I will be doing three coats of the spar urethane and I am doing all of the end pieces. I do try and get inside where I made the pocket holes on every piece of wood to make sure that this is as waterproof as it can possibly be. Uh, living in the state of Colorado, we have sun, we have rain, we have wind, we have hail, and I want this to have the best chance of survival for as long as possible. Um, and even on that note, I probably will add another layer of spar urethane once a year or once every other year, depending on how, um, you know, good I am about doing that. All right, next up, after it has dried, we are gonna sand with a 220 and we're not doing an aggressive sanding. I kind of go over this like I'm wiping something down with a towel just to make sure we get off any imperfections in the polyurethane. If any bubbles happened or if I missed any spots, this just gives the uh, next layer of polyurethane yeah, the best chance to adhere to the wood. All right, now that we're done sanding, we're gonna do a second coat of spar urethane. In total, we're gonna do three coats of the spar urethane, sanding twice in between those coats of spar urethane, and get that done. All right, I'm not gonna bore you with that, but here she is. Don't worry, I haven't put it together. I just set it out here. There's that cute little chair too. Uh, so now it's time for assembly. Are you so excited? All right, so I grabbed two extra two by fours because again, that is gonna be the gap between all of the wood pieces that are attaching to the panels and the support pieces. Um, I am initially going to pre-drill three screws on each side, uh, three 
three inch screws on each side it's just gonna be a lot easier to get these in to the side piece when the screws are already pre-drilled if you are trying to drill when something is sideways it's just just trust me pre-drill your screws um after that we're going to make sure it is centered on our piece and then we're just going to go ahead and uh screw it in I am using my impact driver to screw all of these in. I would highly suggest an impact driver over a drill. It's just gonna give you a lot uh, more torque and better strength getting these pieces in. And I am also using these star screws instead of Phillips screws. I do prefer the star screws while doing big built-ins like these, not built-ins, but big builds. Um, there's almost 0% chance that you're gonna strip a star screw. There isn't a 0%, but it's very minimal compared to a Phillips screw head and you can make a lot more adjustments easier. So let's go ahead and get our side piece on. Again, we are using that two by four and we're using our Craig Jig pocket screws now to get into those holes. Uh, awesome. And then we're gonna get our center back support piece. Again, using that two by four. And I am just making sure that there is a small space between the two by eight and the four by four on the back side, this is for aesthetics uh, purely. And again, that's what I base all my measurements on. So we wanna make sure that we have it correct. So let's go ahead and get those pocket holes into this side piece. Probably wouldn't have been a smart idea to put my hair up, but you know what, you live and you learn. Um, so I did get one pocket hole screw in to get the placement and then I lifted it up. It was just a lot easier for uh, leverage to do it where I had the strength and position to screw these pocket holes in. So I am going to assemble this front board, this front two by eight to the middle support piece first before I attach it to the side piece. Uh, it's just gonna be a lot easier as I continue attaching pieces. This is getting heavier and heavier and harder to move. So again, just doing everything to um, get it correct. Uh, so now I'm gonna have attach those pocket holes to the side pieces and this is gonna make that corner, that end piece incredibly strong and impossible to fall apart. I hope, we don't need to test this anytime soon. Um, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and give you guys the lovely background music as you watch me assemble the rest of this sectional. Oh, and one last thing. On all the back pieces, I had the pocket holes facing the back. All the front pieces, I had the pocket holes facing the inside. Why? So as you can see right here, you don't see any of the pocket holes when you are looking at this when uh, there are no cushions on it. I wanted to have the most seamless look uh, that you could possibly have. Cool. Assembled. All right, so now I am using some silicone caulk and I am putting it in all the cracks. Uh, anything, anywhere wood has a seam, I am adding silicone caulk. Again, this is to give the utmost protection. This is not necessary. Uh, this is just me going above and beyond and overboard because I, I just want this to last. Um, I don't want some water to get in there and eat away at the wood over time. So we are going to caulk every seam that this sectional has. And we will do this throughout the rest of the project. Uh, we finished silicone caulking this. Look how good it looks. Oh my God. Are you so excited? Do you see it coming to life? Okay. It was right here that I realized I needed two more pieces of wood uh, between the corner post and the back because otherwise there's nowhere for the slats to slit, sit in that corner. <laughs> uh, so now I'm measuring for the slat support pieces. These are going to be our two by twos that go on the inside of all of the wood pieces. And again, if you wanna go ahead back to the beginning of this video and reference that, or again, the blog below has them linked in them as well for all of the measurements for the wood slat supports. Cool. All right, so here are our two by twos. I am not gonna cut these yet. I'm actually going to fully sand these down, uh, wood condition and stain them before we cut any of them. Um, surely for the fact that it's gonna be a heck of a lot easier to sand and stain four pieces of wood instead of 12 pieces of wood. Um, I'm gonna repeat that process as well with the wood slats, which are gonna be the one by fours. And again, um, just gonna keep repeating this in the beginning. I have all of these measurements laid out for you on those uh, screenshots in the initial beginning. These are all of our one by fours. I have eight of them, eight one by four by eights, and we're gonna get these all sanded. Okay, so now we are measuring for the back supports. I do want to build these at the same time as the slats so that we can sand, wood condition, stain, and seal all of the pieces at the same time. And when that phase is done, we can put it all together. 
So I do know that a four by four is actually three and a half inches. So I can take that measurement and subtract it from my overall width because this is such a wide piece. All right, so we got our two by fours cut. That is what is gonna be the frame of the back pieces, two by fours. Um, this is for the side of the sectional and the back of the sectional. So we are going to sand those down with our 120 and 220. All right, so now we are going to be adding our pocket holes using that one and a half inch measurement bit. We're gonna add pocket holes on both ends. For the shorter side of the sectional, I am only gonna do two pocket holes. And then for the extra long pieces, they're 115 inches long. I am gonna add three inches, I'm sorry, three screws on both of those sides. So three pocket holes, just to make sure that it can hold the weight. And now it is time to assemble the back frame. So this is the shorter side, obviously. I hope that's obvious. So we are using two of the 17 inch pieces of two by fours. Again, this is listed in the measurements at the beginning of this YouTube tutorial, which I am sure I will reference again just a few more times throughout this YouTube tutorial. All right, let's go ahead and get this assembled. I am using a two by four and it's like a, I wanna say a quarter inch piece of plywood or something, just to make sure that the height of the back two by four is the same height as the side two by four using those pocket screws. And I did assemble this upside down. I laid it out right side up first and then I flipped everything upside down again. I do wanna make sure that the pocket holes are on the back side, so this has the most clean look when you are uh, looking at this without the cushions. And now we will repeat the exact same thing with the larger pieces. I do have to take this to the ground because my table is not quite big enough. Okay, we have our frames built of our back pieces and it's time to dry fit. Obviously we wanna do this to make sure that we did it correct. And guess what, we did it correct! That's where it's gonna go. Amazing, all right, so let's check the big piece. Dun, 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 dun. Bah, bah. Woohoo! It fits! Okay, so now we need to make our slats. So uh, I took the measurements and they are 10 inches. You wanna measure the top and bottom to make sure that it is even and you didn't mess up. And surprise, surprise, it is Perfect. So we just need to cut a whole bunch of 10 inch slats. Great. And these are the back slats, not to be confused with the base slats. These 10 inch slats are gonna be from the two by eight wood, as opposed to the base slats will be the one by four wood. And this will give me the ability to put a block right here so that I can whip out 15 10 inch pieces of wood. All right, I think that's enough wood cutting. So we have all of our pieces, we have 15 pieces. We are going to be sanding all of these and then we're gonna be adding our pocket holes. So I did a 120 first, adding all the pocket holes and then I will do the 220 again, just like that. And I will do two pocket holes on the top and the bottom for assembly. Wonderful. And it is time to assemble the back pieces. So I like to, evenly space these out just to get a good look, see what I'm working with. Um, I do use my clear ruler to kind of adjust. Once I get the right placement, I will add some wood glue and flip this over and get them all in. song was really having me vibing. Anyways, I got the short side done. So now we get to move on to the long side. We do have to assemble this one on the ground because it is so very long. Looking good. It's roughly three inches apart. I think it was like three and a quarter or just under three, less than three and a quarter. And this is where I realized I needed one more piece. So essentially you will need 11 for the long back and four for the short back. And just like magic, that 11th piece is cut and we are ready to install. So we're gonna do this the exact same way. We're gonna add some wood glue. I do only do uh, about three pieces at a time, lifting this entire thing and having all of those pieces balance while I go down the row was just impossible. So yeah, I did uh, three, maybe four pieces at a time and then screwed those in and then kept, kept going. And would you look at that? She's done, look at that beast. Oh, it's so good. All right, we've reached the next day. All the pieces are cut and assembled for the most part. It is time to wood condition, stain, and seal these guys. So we're gonna start off with our pre-conditioner and 
Uh, I didn't mention this before, but make sure you wear a face mask because this stuff is stinky and you don't want to breathe that in. Uh, so we're going to wood condition all of our pieces again and wait that 30 minutes before we start staining. Uh, I'm not going to make you watch me wood condition and stain everything again because it just takes a whole long time. But I will show you the steps. So yeah, we are going to be doing that antique whitewash again to remove those yellow tannins. Wonderful. Here we go. Three, two, one. Okay, everything is whitewashed. Yay! And next up is the Early American. And again, we will be doing two coats of this on everything. And three, two, one. Yay! Everything is stained and it is time to add our spar urethane. Three coats again, sanding in between each coat. Three, two, one. Just kidding, I'm going to show you some details. I am going to use the spar urethane and get in these cracks to make sure that, again, we are preventing any water from getting in these and deteriorating this wood any sooner than it needs to be. So after our three coats of the spar urethane standing between each coat, three, two, one, we're done. All right, next, before we finish for the night, we are gonna add that silicone caulk in these Craig jig pocket hole gaps. So there are two things you could do. You could add the silicone caulk in these holes or you could add a Craig jig plug. Um, I calculated it for how many holes I had. It was gonna be an additional hundred plus dollars to get enough plugs for all of the holes that the Craig Jedick had made and I just decided that one tube of silicone caulk in these holes was going to be a lot cheaper and cost effective and have the same effect and you will never see these holes because they are on the back sides of this sectional so I call that a win. Good morning! All right, so let's attach these two support pieces on the inside that I had missed previously. This is for the corner sectional for what these slats will attach to. And I did use my speed square to make sure that everything was at a 90 degree angle. I used my clamps to place the wood and then went ahead and used my Craig pocket screws and attached it to the center piece and the back piece. And then I repeated this on the right side as well. And once both sides were attached, I again used some silicone caulk around all of the creases just to protect this against the element. All right, guess what time it is? Peanut butter jelly time, peanut butter jelly time. Just kidding, it's time to cut our slat support pieces. So I have all my measurements, again, referenced at the beginning of this YouTube tutorial, using our two by twos that are fully sanded, stained, and sealed. So now we are gonna go ahead and get these pieces all cut and attached so that we can get our base fully finished. And I did write with a Sharpie the measurements on the inside of each cut so that I would know exactly where it went on my built in when I was done. And here we go. So we're just going to dry fit these just to make sure that they all fit. And they do, woohoo! So it's time for assembly. I did cut one slat piece initially just to make sure I had the height of the slat support piece. And then I used my two inch screws. I wanted them to get in a little bit deeper and be flush with the board. So I went ahead and grabbed my countersink bit. And now we're gonna drill our countersink holes. We're gonna do six of them. And once we have our holes all drilled, we are gonna pre-drill those screws in just like we did with our end pieces. This is gonna make uh, installation a lot faster and a lot easier. Uh, we are going to use that slat piece again just to make sure we have our height correct. And then we're gonna go ahead and screw this in. I do uh, both ends first and then I go throughout the center and that just makes it a lot easier and faster. Don't mind the vibrations. That is how strong these screws are. So we have all of our support slats in. All right. Next up, we are silicone caulking again because, as I have said before, we're protecting from all the elements. All right, so next up, I am spacing out the slats and counting how many I will need. I used a two by two to space it. Once we have all of our pieces cut and spaced, we are using our 18 gauge brad nailer with one and a half inch brad nails, and we are just going to uh, nail them all in. I did three nails in each end. Once all the slats are locked in, we are getting close to the finish line. So I want to put my pillows in, but I realized that this one doesn't quite fit in the corner because of that corner post. So I just open it up and cut a little piece out. I use my utility knife, my break off blade. So I have a very long blade and I can just cut a corner out. I kind of line it up, measure it, cut it out. Cool. There it is. It's gone. Zip her back up and she fits like a glove. All right, so now that we have our cushions, this is gonna be our height placement for our back piece. So I'm gonna go ahead and bring that piece in and get it installed. It was a little bit tighter once it was stained and sealed, but do not have any fear. She went right in. So now I'm just gonna lower it so it sits right above those top cushions and then I will get that measurement for the height to make sure it is even on both sides. All right, once we have our placement, we're gonna go ahead and use that countersink bit again. You, uh, Sorry for the angle, but I am drilling four holes right here for the countersink bit to attach. I will uh, add those three inch screws one more time. And then this side is 
done. Oh my goodness. Can you even believe it? I was lucky enough to have my parents visiting while I was finishing up this build. So good old daddy-o was here to help me hold up this back piece. Uh, the measurements on the right side was 12 inches exactly from the bottom of the back piece to the top of the four by fours. So once I got that to 12 inches, I went ahead and got a clamp to hold it together. Then I went to the other side to repeat the same thing. And lo and behold, it was too heavy for that clamp on the left side. So it kind of adjusted, shifted, um, but don't worry, we figure it out. I decided to just go ahead and drill in two countersink bit holes and get two screws in on the right side while my dad holds it for placement. And once I get those two screws in, we repeat the same steps on the left side, uh, just screwing two screws in at first. And then I will end up doing a total of five screws each on each side because of how incredibly heavy this is. Let's go ahead and put those last three screws in and oh my god, she's basically done. All we have left is to silicone these holes as well to again protect against the elements just like we always do. And then lastly, a little bit of silicone caulk to all of the slat grooves because a lot of water could sit in those spaces for an extended period of time. It would be really hard to dry out and adding that silicone caulk to the top. And then I also kind of smeared it over where the nail holes were to protect. So this, this bench is fully protected and she's fully done guys. Are you ready to see? <gasps> oh my goodness. I built that and you're about to build it. Good luck. You got this. And everything you see here is from the Home Depot linked down below. Thanks for watching. Follow for more DIY and tutorials.